Woo! Hello! Welcome to another episode of Fire Emblem Warrior 3 Hopes. We're not to the main campaign, and let me just show you how much I've been doing off screen. Ah. <sighs> Essentially, all the grinding I am required to do, except for possibly max leveling, all done. All my classes are mastered. Hey and so far, all of my support is done. As such, I'm going to be recording the support right now, and then we'll see what we encounter later on. So, I'm muting now. Oh, it's the captain. Yeah, handle it any way you want. This should be an easy job for you. I'll report back when it's done. Sounds good. We're gonna take care of some other matters in the meantime. Uh... Why are you making that noise, Leone? You got an upset stomach or something? No, I don't. <sighs> you know how the captain and his mercenaries joined forces with us? Yeah, I'm so glad you get to fight with them again. Oh, wait. This is the first time you two are actually fighting together, right? Yep. I haven't seen him since we parted ways when I was a kid. I've never been in a battle with him or anything. So, yeah, I'm happy, but... No! Oh, I can't take it! Wait a minute. Is this about his kid? Yeah we're practically the same age. But only one of us has the captain's full confidence and a cool nickname. We're both mercenaries for crying out loud, and I was the captain's first apprentice. But you're not family. You can bet that Gerald would have trained any child of his from birth a whole lot longer than you. Ugh, you have a point there. And if you want to talk about age, Alois has been with him since their night days. Which means it's likely that he was actually Gerald's first apprentice, right? Hey, you're right. I didn't even think about that. In any case, it's kind of a given you wouldn't be on the same level. I mean, they haven't just studied under Gerald, they've had years of on-the-job training with him. Plus, you don't have any weird powers. You mean like you do? Yeah, but our powers are completely different. To be honest, I want to best the Ashen Demon too. I've been striving to do that this whole time, but still haven't managed to pull it off. Is that right? You know, even if we teamed up, I'm not so sure we'd win. I don't know about that. With the two of us together, I think we might actually have a shot at it. In fact, I think my money would be on us. Want to set up a challenge sometime and see what happens? I'm all for it. After all, the captain has a saying. Better to fight dirty and win, than play fair and lose. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Gerald. Well, for a mercenary, all that matters is the outcome. Exactly. You know, I'm really glad you're here. Same goes for you, Leone. Now let's stay sharp and show the Ashen Demon up our own way. is new magic born but I mustn't rest on my laurels quite yet nay I must aim for ever more spectacular heights hey Constance you got a second Claude of all people you may enter up to some of your old experiments huh perfect timing <laughs> how dare 
you speak of me as though I am some non-entity to be slotted into your schedule. Whoa, whoa, hey, hang on. I just heard you were researching some interesting magic. Ha ha ha, you have heard correctly. I have created a new spell which can affect both the style and length of one's hair. There is no questioning this heralds a revolution that will sweep all of Fodlin. Revolutions aside, that sounds like an incredible spell. Care to give me a little demonstration? This is great. If I can change my hairstyle at will, I'll be able to slip out of all kinds of sticky situations. Of course! And you shall be my first test subject. Your first? Hey, hold on. This idea is not sounding quite so clever anymore. <laughs> Take this! Did it work? Beyond my wildest imaginings! Why, your hair is now more resplendent than ever! I appreciate the sentiment, but I still don't know... Wait, why is my hair... Ow! It's so sharp it hurt my hand! I really don't think this hairstyle is going to catch on. I'm like an angry cat that fell into a bathtub. And now you know what it means to be ahead of your time. Unconventional though it may be, your hairstyle is objectively flawless! This isn't exactly ideal for keeping a low profile. I couldn't even wear a hat without tearing right through the thing. <laughs> Inconceivable! You are given the rare honor of being the subject of my magic, yet all you can think to do is whinge and complain! If that is to be your response, why did you rush to my side the moment I completed the experiment? Yeah, I guess things turned out a bit differently than I'd been led to believe. Still, it is some pretty incredible magic. I doubt anyone else could even come close. <laughs> you sound as though you're consoling me, yet I have not failed in the slightest. No, I'm not calling it a failure, per se. It's just that the applications might be rather... Uh... You will come to rue those words. <laughs> so, you've arrived, Claude. I pray you are ready. <laughs> Okay, no need to start off with a bunch of yelling. And, uh, what should I be ready for, exactly? <laughs> the day has finally come! The day for you to be thunderstruck by the self-same magic you once so viciously mocked! The magic? The magic... Oh, you mean that hair-raising one you used on me? hair No! That is not the purpose! It is meant for changing the length and style of hair! Right, sure. Um, so what about it again? Ugh, oh, your droll lack of enthusiasm boggles the mind! Do you understand just how much I devoted myself to my studies since that day of shame? Also, I might have some vindication? Okay, wait, look, I know you're a hard worker, but that was just, you know, one of those things. I don't really think you need vindication. Silence, Creighton! Let your jaw hang slack in its moorings as you witness how my magic has evolved! Whoa! Again? Well, at least I'm not sharp and pointy this time. You most certainly are not. Do you truly think me the type to make the same mistake twice? It has been quite the gauntlet of trial and error, yet finally I have arrived. I stand now on the fresh new ground of magic. The magic of gentle tresses tumbling over one's shoulders. Say, this does come in nicely at the ends. Some parts longer, some shorter. Oh, but it's 
really frizzy. Ah, it's like a, it's like a bird's nest up in here. What an exquisite style! What an innovative look! Truly, this is the most striking of spells! Uh, and I guess I have a fluffy beard now? Well, that's certainly something. Yes, and it makes you appear quite unkempt. Perhaps it is not the look for you. <laughs> hey, don't laugh it off. What am I supposed to do about this mountain man beard, huh? Last time you zapped me, my hair was stiff enough to stab through armor for an entire day. I couldn't even get to sleep because I shredded my pillow. Are you saying I've just got to grin and bear this until it wears off? At this point, there is nothing else I can do. You can adore this for one day, no? If it helps, I am willing to offer my moral support. If only this wasn't Fodlin. And what is so wrong with Fodlin? Just that a manly beard like this would be considered a real accomplishment in the East. Your magic would be praised to the heavens if you went out that direction. Then my magic can transcend borders? You finally understand the extent of my talent! <laughs> No, it's just that this kind of beard here in Fodlin... Okay, she's not listening. Sun's up already? Uh, ah, good morning! Whoa! Happy, is that you? Where are you? I'm surprised you knew I was here. He just about gave me a heart attack with that impromptu good morning. I wasn't exactly saying it to you, Claudster, but... Oh, never mind. So, you're waking up with the sun, huh? I love it. You're like a step dweller. And what would that be exactly? Oh, you know, those folks who live to the east of Fodlin. But you're also awake. Does that mean you're a step dweller like me? Hey, my motto is the early bird gets the worm. Sounds fake. Oh, but I said it in my most earnest voice. And your face betrayed you. Still, it's surprising how easy you are to talk with. I figured a king would be an arrogant blowhard, but that's not you at all. You're a lot more comfortable to be around than the Emperor, or the King of Fargus. Not sure if that's a compliment, but it's definitely not easy leading the Federation. I could spend days unloading my troubles on you and only scratch the surface. Sounds like you've got your hands full. Also, please don't unload your troubles on me. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Still. If it's that much grief, why not quit? You could have someone else take your place if you hate it so much. I mean, the whole thing was your idea, so you should be able to step aside if you want. Sure, I suppose I could do that. But that's not the path for me at the moment. The list of things I want to accomplish is as long as my arm, and if I want to see them become a reality, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Well then, I guess you've got my support. I mean, all these heady thoughts and ideas are a bit above the level of yours truly. But I can still give support. So, chin up, Claudster. It's all gonna work out. Someone I knew used to say that. A relative, I think? I can't really remember. Well, I appreciate it regardless. It's exactly the kind of thing I need to hear right now. In that case, I'll double down. It's all gonna work out. It sounds even better the second time. Seriously, you should be telling that to everyone you meet. There you go again, putting others first. Yeah, well, it's all gonna work out, Claudster. I just have a feeling. Ah. <sighs>
<sighs> the strategy meeting is complete chaos today. Well, we have a little time, so if they want to argue until they're blue in the face, I won't stop them. But I am going to sneak out and find something to nibble on, because I'm starving. Okay, there must be some fruit here. Huh? Hey, Clodster. Hey, Happy. Aren't you supposed to be in the meeting? Yeah, but I got hungry and slipped out. I didn't even notice you leave. You're even more slippery than I realized. Well, it's not like the meeting will unfold differently if I decide to stick around. And since I'm not the only one who skipped out, I guess folks will have to be mad at us together. Ha! <laughs> Guilty as charged. Still, the implications are different for me than they are for the great King Clodster. If someone gets mad at me, it's no big deal. But you probably get the wrath of everyone raining down on you for even the slightest misstep. Hmm, sad but true. Hey, so I know you love to run out and do stupid stuff like this sometimes. But did you take on all this responsibility because you wanted to? Or would you walk away if you found someone to take your place? I already told you. There's a huge list of things I want to see accomplished, remember? And sure, it's a heavy burden, but that's all the more reason I can't let someone else shoulder it for me. It's up to me to carry my own water here. Then I guess it's not enough for me to just give you my support. What do you mean? Well, I'm not really carrying anything at the moment. Water or otherwise. So I was thinking it might be nice to take some of the load from you. Just because you aren't as overloaded as me doesn't mean you don't have commitments. I don't know how I feel about burdening you with my, you know, burdens. Sure, but if you keep it to yourself and it crushes you, that doesn't help me either. I'm not as weak as you think I am. Well, no matter what, it's all going to work out. It definitely will. You know what? Maybe I'll take you up on that offer of help after all. Whatever you need. In that case, I'll start off with a tough one. How do we handle the fact we skipped out on the strategy meeting? Oh, uh, well, I can't take that off your shoulders, so... I'll stand there and take the scolding with you. Scolding, huh? <laughs> you called it the wrath of everyone like a minute ago. shorter than I thought. Uh, well, I guess that's that. Till next time. I think there is a few left because it's generally has to do with Chess. It's Chess. Chess Claude. It's literally Chess Claude. Alright then. Till next time. Goodbye.